Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here for another uh, Thought Leadership Zcast. Uh, I'm joined by, uh, I'm delighted to be joined by this gentleman, Nabil Bukhari. You're the CTO of Extreme Networks. Uh, you're one of the smartest uh, network people I know. And so, you know, early in my career, Howard Anderson from Yankee Group said, get to know the 10 smartest guys in your industry. So, you know, I'd throw you in that category. So uh, why don't you do say a quick hello to the audience and just give a brief intro on you're obviously the CTO, but what you do for Extreme and who Extreme is for people maybe not that familiar with the company. Uh, first of all, thank you, Zias. Thank you for that introduction. That's very, very generous and very kind of you. And I can say likewise, you know, you are one of the most, um, I think one of the most influential analysts out there in the networking space. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to talk yeah. to you. Um, so I want to say thank you and, and hello to all of your audience. Uh, my name is Davil Bukhari. I work for Extreme Networks. Um, I'm the CTO of the company. I'm also the chief product officer. Um, and my role really is uh, multiple fold in the sense that really think about where the industry is headed from a networking point of view, where it should head to, and then what are the investments that Extreme is going to make uh, in terms of making that vision a reality and how do we bring that vision through our products and our services, our ecosystems, um, and really help our customers and then their customers achieve the outcomes um, of what they want in their businesses and their lives from networking. Uh, so it's a fun job. Yeah. Well, as a CTO, you're always looking around the corner. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, you're in for a good show because we're going to be talking about some really cool AI capabilities that are coming soon to a network near you. Uh, before we start, though, I just do want to give a quick shout out to eWeek. eWeek is my immediate partner and all Zcast are done in conjunction with the eWeek eSpeaks program. Uh, now, Nabil, uh, we just saw each other, <laughs> you know, like, uh, recently we saw each other at the Extreme Connect event in Nashville. Uh, it was your first in-person connect uh, in the better part of three years. Uh, it was great seeing live people again, so I wasn't just looking at a little box. Uh, and just what were some of your thoughts from the show? Did it live up to what you were hoping for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, as you said, uh, you know, after three years and all of a sudden you see these people and you're like, oh, you're not a poster on Zoom. You're a real person. Uh, no, you know, joking aside, I, I think it was phenomenal. I mean, like, the energy you were there, the energy was just through the roof, the customers, the partners, you know, the internal teams, they were happy to be together. And I really believe that that's the kind of environment that allows you know, newer ideas to form. That, that's the cauldron for innovation and relationships. Um, and look, I'm a huge, huge fan of these distributed infinite enterprises and work from anywhere. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, there is no alternative to putting people together in one room. Now, you don't have to do that all the time in like these little tiny cubes, but bringing people together, there, there, is, there is something about that that cannot be replaced ever in my opinion. And one of my key takeaways from the show is I know we're in the midst of what people think might be a recession. Well, you wouldn't know it from your, your, your customers. I know your backlog is massive. I talked to your CEO at MyRecord about this. You've never had a bigger backlog in the company's history. And the, you know, a lot of um, uh, you know, business experts will say, when the market's down is when you want to invest in your company so you can break away when things rebound. And I saw that from your audience. Everybody is interested in modernizing the network today because it is, it is the foundation for digital transformation. Now, you, you just said a couple of words which I find interesting and because you said them in your keynote at Connect as well, and that's the infinite enterprise. And so that's something I know has been part of Extreme's go-to-market now for uh, the better part of a year or so. Uh, what is the infinite enterprise? Yeah, so absolutely. You have heard me talk about it multiple, multiple times. Uh, but look, just generally speaking, the core sentiment behind Infinite Enterprise is that, look, pandemic was not just like an event, just that a pandemic, you know, all of our daily lives, but it really changed the behaviors that you and I have as consumers. You know, we shop differently. Um, our kids go to school differently. Uh, we get our healthcare services differently. We get our government services differently. I mean, we work differently, right? So the pandemic really changed uh, the behavior of the consumer. Now, once the consumer behavior changed, then businesses have to adapt to that. That means that they have to run their businesses a little bit differently. Schools now have to think about curriculum that is digital and in-person both at the same time, and people can move simultaneously between them. Retail, I'm like, we've been talking about online right retail, you know, for a while anyways, but now think about instant delivery within the hour of delivery, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with healthcare. 
I mean, I, I don't think I ever want to go back for my regular, no. you know, calls with my doctor into a doctor office. I'm so used to it, uh, you know, on, on screen, but it's not just about me talking to my doctor on screen. It's my doctor's ability to download my records wherever they are digitally in the right amount of time and securely, right? So connecting clinicians and and, and patients and wherever the resources are together. Same thing, I can go vertical after vertical after vertical. So they all need to think about how do they wanna run the business in a post-pandemic world. And Infinite Enterprise is a vision that delivers that outcome for the business. And it's really based on three fundamental outcomes. One thing is we need to start from uh, something that we just need to accept is that there's going to be infinite distribution. Whether it is your people working at your company, whether it's your patients, whether it's your customers, consumers, whoever they are, they are going to be wherever they are. And you will never be able to force them to come together into a center. So infinite distribution, you have to reach everybody where they are. So that's one. Um, and of course, just reaching them is not good enough. You have to securely reach them. The second one is which translates that you need to run your networks. You have to run your technology at scale. Now at scale, has a couple of different connotations. One, obviously, if everybody is distributed, your networks are going to be more distributed. There'll be more nodes and blah, blah, blah. But you're not going to have more people in your team. You're not going to go from like 30 IT people to 300 IT people. You might go from 30 to 22. So which means that you need to scale up your operation. So that means more automation, more help from tools like AI and ML, more technologies that are self-install and self-governing and stuff. So that's all fits into at scale. And the last part is consumer centricity, right? Now, consumer centricity is, is obviously a very broad topic, but I'll give you just one example from a networking context point of view. If you were all sitting in an office and if Wi-Fi is not working, you know, somebody would stand up and yell, hey, my Wi-Fi is not working. And you're like, oh, let me just go look at it. But if your people and your consumers are distributed around the globe, saying that they have to open up a ticket and then somebody will respond to it in two hours, that's not going to cut it any longer. So consumer centricity means that you need to know what is the experience of your consumers at any given time in real time, assess it and do something about it if it goes bad in real time as well which is underpinned by essentially cloud and data. So those are the three big outcomes, which we believe are the centerpieces of infinite enterprise. And every business will figure out what it means for them, but they will all move towards infinite enterprise. That's our vision around that. Yeah, scale is an interesting topic because to me, that's the real mark of a vendor, uh, mm -hmm. of a network vendor. Anybody can build a switch. Can you build it to work at scale? And I know Extreme Gear is used in you know, some of the biggest venues in the world, right? Gillette Stadium, LA Memorial, you know, Old Trafford Stadium. So, you you know, this is where 60, 70, 80,000 people get together. And if that stuff doesn't work, everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. Me, that, that's some real scale there. So that, that is absolutely. And, and, and on that side, that's scale. And then on the other side, I mean, like scale also has a connotation of dependability and reliability yeah. always on. So some of the largest hospitals, you know, out there, both on this side of the Atlantic and the other side of the Atlantic, you know, NHS out there in UK, the one system here um, in US, Ascension Health, OSL, I mean, I can go on and on and on. Um, that's scale is for them, you know, scale is something like obviously in the healthcare environment, scale is a matter of life and death, literally, right? Yeah. And on a stadium, it is about, you know, spectator experience. If they don't get good experience, they don't want to come to the stadium any longer. So that's a life and death for the business, if you would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the picture you painted of this infinite enterprise is one where people are accessing resources from your company from everywhere on whatever device or whatever network. And while that's a very nice sort of Pollyanna-ish world we live in, for the network manager, yeah. man, that is a much different environment than what they're used to, right? So the, the nice, tight, little controlled world that they have is gone. Yeah. And so what kind of challenges does that create uh, for, you know, for your customers? You're spot on. I mean, 
think the post pandemic world is fascinating, but frightening for a network ops person. Now imagine where you had your nice, you know, you have your Wi-Fi and you have your wired and everything is within a building and you have control, physical control and configuration control to everything where all of a sudden everybody's working from wherever they are or, you know, shopping from wherever they are. And you don't really have control on all the things that fall in the middle, but then you are held responsible for their experience. That's the world that the network operators are going to be part of. They're looking at it um, and it's scary, right? Uh, so the challenge of having technology that is very widely distributed, challenge of having more technology to deal with and same resources, those are some of the challenges that IT teams are facing today. And then securing them. And securing is not just about putting a firewall in front of everything, as you and I have talked about it multiple times. Security is built in design. Um, you know, it is about securing the data, it is securing the devices, it is compliance, and all those kind of things. Um, so all of those challenges really come together. It's really a challenge of complexity, which translates into cost, which increases your risk. So this is how I describe it, that the post-pandemic world, the infinite enterprise world, if you do not think about it from the very start, it can get very costly, very complex, and very risky. Uh, and those are the three big challenges. Yeah, and so to help customers combat this growing complexity, let's face it, whatever complexity we have today, it's going to get more complex, right? And so to help with that complexity at, at uh, Connect, you guys rolled out something called Digital Twin, which I think is pretty cool. In fact, digital twins have been widely used in a number of verticals, manufacturing, aerospace, things like that. Uh, but before you talk about extremes version of digital twin, can you define what a digital twin is? Yeah, absolutely. And as you pointed out, um, you know, this is a technology that has been used, you know, widely in other verticals. I don't know if you can hear the dog in the background. I know your dog's really with it. <laughs> The dog is like, yes, absolutely. I believe in it. Um, so it's a digital dog, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll make a digital twin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but coming back to your question, the digital twins have been around for a while in other industries. And at, at the core of it, what's the purpose? When systems are really complex and complicated, you know, when you are building them, you are figuring out, you're making changes, you're, you're, you're staging them, you're figuring out how it works and how it doesn't work, trying to create a physical variation of it again and again and again and again to do that testing, development, troubleshooting, staging, and all those kind of things is, is prohibitively expensive and complex. So Digital Twin allows you to take a very complex physical system and create an exact digital twin of it, which allows you to then make all the changes and figure out, do your testing, troubleshooting, and everything, and further development on it at a much faster pace at the fraction of the cost. So, so that how you really apply good. that concept Mm -hmm. to the extreme portfolio and how do you, how are you how should your customers think about what that can do for them and which is exactly that way so as you and i just talked about that that look when it's when you're thinking about infinite enterprise and you're thinking about infinite distribution that's not a neatly packed network any longer that's a very broad complex you know available everywhere kind of a network so how do you stage a network like that how do you verify a network like that? How do you troubleshoot a network like that? If you start racking and stacking these devices and pulling cable to them and putting people on it, that's way, way, way too costly. So what we said was that, look, this problem has been solved in other verticals, just not in networking. So let us take the same solution to that. So we introduced our digital twins, which allows you to create a digital twin of everything that we sell into the cloud and then you can do with a click of a button and you can do all of your testing and your verification and your troubleshooting and everything in that cloud. And then with a click of a button, deploy it in production. So again, reducing complexity, reducing cost, which in turn reduces the risk, right? And as yeah. you and I talked about this, that look, Digital Twin, it's the first time anybody has brought it to networking and we're starting with the exact replica of your device. And then we have big plans for it. We want to get to a point where no matter how complex your network is, we can give you an exact real-time digital replica of your entire network in the cloud. That's where we are headed. And that will help solve that complexity and that fear that IT teams have, because now we'll give the power of digital twin at the you know, tip of their fingers, which will help them wrap their heads around the infinite enterprise and do it at scale. 
All right. Well, so you painted a good vision of where you're going. So for customers that are interested in this, what's available today and what, what else is coming when? Yeah. So, so today you can, you can create digital replicas of a wired and wireless entire portfolio in the cloud today, which allows you to, and it's the same exact code that runs. This is something that you and I talked about that looks simulators have been around for a while. But if you simulate something and you don't find a pro problem in that simulation, that is no guarantee that you will not find you know, the problem in the production because it's a simulator. It's not the exact code, exact bit and byte. With our digital twin, it is the exact code that is running on the physical device. So once you test it, verify it, and build out a configuration, it will 100% of the time work on the production, on the actual device as well. So you can create the digital twins of our wired and wireless portfolio today. Very soon we will add our SD-WAN portfolio to it as well. And then the next step would be to essentially, so these are when you take new devices and stuff, but we wanna give the ability to click of a button and create a digital twin of your network that is already running and in production. So that should be coming out very soon. Uh, and that would be that would be almost like Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, all of these things are becoming more and more real because we believe so strongly in that vision of infinite enterprise that not only we are building all of these products that go into there, but we are building products that allow our customers to get there without the complexity and cost. Well, Nabil, uh, where were you when I was an engineer? Because we built physical twins for our, for our backup networks. And I thought, yeah, complexity and cost, you got it. Because whatever whatever version of operating system you were running on one, you weren't running on the other. <laughs> and you know, you and I have both been through that, right? Yeah. It's just like you were deploying a new network. And then for three months before that, you start finding some rack space and some power where you can like, you know, stage these devices and verify it. And now it's all the click of a button in the cloud. Imagine how easy that makes the life of an idea administrator or an architect. Yeah, well, so if you're interested in it, I'll include this link in the description, but I know uh, your uh, uh, colleague works with Jeevan Patil. He wrote a pretty nice blog talking about digital twin within the Extreme XIQ uh, environment. So I'll make sure I include that, uh, that as well. But uh, Nabil Bukhari, thank you so much for joining me. I think, uh, we're approaching a part of networking where we're really starting to see the impact that artificial intelligence can happen or, or can have. I think initially we were using AI to solve some of the tough problems, but now we're starting to bring AI in to do things that we couldn't possibly have done before. And so, you know, it was great to see that. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, on, so on behalf of Nabil, I'm Zia's Caravalla from CK Research. Don't forget to click to subscribe and I'll see you next time on Zcast.